Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over how to display a waveform on the next show, which I've done in the past, but in this case, I'm going to use an accelerometer to show real-time data. The hope is, get, is to get to a point where if I shake the accelerometer, you see the data on the Nexion display like that. Before this, we're going to start in the Nexion itself. For the display, and when we get to display the data on it, all we're going to have is this waveform object on the page. The waveform itself has an attribute called CH, and that's just the number of channels that it can display. In this case, I've chosen three. This PCO, 0, 1, and 2, is going to show the color for each channel. I've added a timer to the project, and I'll remove that when we go on to the Arduino, but just to show you how, what the command structure looks like. So I have the timer set to go every 50 milliseconds. The way the command itself works is you type the word add, and then you have to add the object ID, and the ID of that graph or the waveform is 1. And then the next thing you add is the channel, 0, 1, or 2, and then the value you want to write. Now, we're just going to write the same value to channel 0, 1, and 2 over and over and over again. But for this example, I'll add, I'll make this be 70. So we're going to write 50 and 70 almost simultaneously to um, channel 1. So we'll see what this looks like. Now you can see there's two lines, the bottom line and the top line, and then this bar going across. And the bar is going across twice as fast. And that's because we're writing to that middle value or that channel 1 twice. So it's going to add two spots for each one. And it's drawing a line between it really fast. It's not really solid, but for this example, it's going to look solid. So if I take this and I delete this, and now I'm only drawing one point on each wave every time the timer times, the line should stay even. And you can see now they're staying even, but the other time it was going between 50 and 70 and it was just drawn up and down really fast, so it looked more like a bar. So when we're over in the Arduino, we're going to have to send this command, add 1, 2, comma, or whatever channel, and then the value. And notice that there's no quotes, so it'll just be a single string that we send up. So we're going to use this wire.h library, and that's what configures that I squared C. Print a string called starting I squared C, because the next command is wire.begin. For the accelerometer I'm using, it's these, it's 68 in hex. And then you select the register on that device, in this case it's 6B and that's the power register or the power management register and then we're going to write a bunch of zeros to it and then we're going to end the transmission and then we're going to configure the gyroscope register and we do the same thing we begin transmission to the device ID which is 68 and then we select the register the gyroscope is 1b and the accelerometer is 1c and then we're going to write the values of 1 0 to it and after we configure the gyroscope, we'll configure the accelerometer. And once again, we, we do the device ID, which is 68. And then we're going to write to register 1C, and we're going to write the values 08. We're going to jump over to the function delay function. And that's over here on the delay tab. And initially, what we have to do is we have to set the address that we're going to be looking at to the proper location or the proper register where the data will be stored for the accelerometer or the gyroscope. And we're going to start by looking at the accelerometer where we have it set to 3B. So this is where we do the request from. We're going to request from device 68, but from 68 we're going to request 6 bytes, and after we have those 6 bytes we're going to end the transmission. That's what the true means. We're going to do two wire reads on each one of these lines, and we're going to store it in a 16-bit short called XRAW, YRAW, and ZRAW. So 
now the values are coming in as this short, the 16-bit short. But we have to convert it to a number, a value from plus or minus 4. And we do that by dividing the raw data by 8192 and then converting it to a float so it can be a decimal point. We're going to go back to this main tab and we're going to change this to 10. So now what we have is a delay length of 10 milliseconds. Now when it comes to the connection, we send that add for each channel, 1, and then for the ID for the device or the waveform is 1, and then the channels are 0, 1, and 2. But instead of sending a value from negative 4 to 4, the first thing we have to do is shift all that to a positive value. So instead of negative 4 to 4, we're going to add 4, so it's going to be 0 to 8. And since we have 8 integers, because we're going to keep it in x float form, at least at the beginning, and we're going to multiply it times 30. And how we come up with 30 is since we have 8, the value is 0 to 8, but we have to transfer that or map that to a value of 0 to 255. 255 and divide it by 8 and we get like 31 around there but I just left it 30 for reference it's close enough for the video you can see it did some adjusting here because I was messing around with it before and now this is the actual data coming through so now when I grab this we should get a nice Nice wave. It's not super clear on here. I need to get a better camera, I guess. But if I do it slow, you can kind of see it. Looks pretty good. If you'll notice that the accelerometer, it holds its position. So as I turn it or adjust it, it changes and then it flat lines out. Whereas the gyroscope, it, it, everything's zeros, and then based upon the movement, it'll change. We're going to switch that and go to that next. So on this delay loop, where we do the wire right and we select that register for the accelerometer, that 0, 3B, all we have to do is change that and select 4, 3. And now we're reading the data from the gyroscope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to change this first one to plus 2. I'm going to leave that one at 4, and change this one to 6. And then I'm going to upload this. And now when it's uploaded, you'll see the lines on the screen will separate. As you can see that one of the axes is going to be at 2, one will be at 4, and one will be at 6. Now they will go off the screen, but at least it's separated so you can see the different. So you can see that bottom one is the rotation to turn this way. And if I go this way with it, that's the top one. And if I go a different way with it, it's the middle one. So you can see all three axes independently. But you can also see that it's pretty easy to add um, different waveforms and send multiple channels to the connection from the Arduino. The code in it is only one line of code, and it's just this add command. So you do the add, the device number, the channel number, and then the value. But you do have to make sure that in the connection display itself that that waveform can accept the data. And you do that by setting up the number of channels on the connection before you start transmitting data from the Arduino. Now this video is going to be tied to the one I did a few weeks ago with the Lux box and the spinning of the fan because I want to hook this accelerometer up to measure the vibration on the fan. As I've also been told that you can tell the RPMs using the vibration sensor. So I want to see if that's true. I've never done it before, but I want to check it out and see. So I might also hook up a Hall Effect device that will give me the actual RPM and compare it against what we see with the accelerometer. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.